Hello pilots and welcome to the next instalment of Out of Art Gaming's Faction Breakdown. My name is Phil. Today we're going to be looking at that hive of scum and villainy and going through the standard ships that you can expect to find when coming up against possibly one of the most versatile factions within the game. So let's jump straight into this and see what you're going to see across the table. When talking about scum ships, I think there are quite a few that are going to come to mind first, but we're going to start with some of the smaller base ships, which means we do have to, of course, start with the Fang Fighter. This ship is just so well known and so rightly fit. We've seen it in the Rebel Breakdown, and that ship takes a slightly different approach within that faction than you get with this one. Now, for a stat line, as with the Rebel one, you get three attack, three evade, four hull. You have a focus, target lock, barrel roll to red focus, and boost to red focus. Now, this ship is crazy. It's just gonna wanna get right in your face. And with an action bar like that, it's going to be able to do that. All of the ships come with the Concordia face-off, while you defend, if the attack range is 1 and you are in the attacker's forward arc, change one result to an evade. So it might not have any shields, but it is more than happy to get right in your face and not really care about what's going to happen. It has an impressive dial as well, with the white 1 hard, all of the two basic maneuvers being blue, a blue 3 forward, it has the 2 talent roll, and the 4k turn so this ship has no troubles getting right in your face and just causing you lots of pain now with this ship general role you're going to find this as your flanking knife fighter although it's okay with getting right in your face and not really worrying too much about what happens it is still going to be a typical ace and like to get round the side to avoid being shot where possible but knowing that if it does get shot, it's not the end of the world for this ship. Especially when you'll find that most Fang Fighters you come up against with a talent slot will be stapled with the Fearless upgrade. Which, for those of you that haven't seen it, while you perform a forward arc primary attack, if the attack range is 1 and you're in the defender's forward arc, you may change one of your results to a hit. So again, this ship likes to live dangerous. Now, notable pilots, there are two pilots that I think are really good on this platform. First off, the less obvious, is Joy Rekoff, the I-4 Skull Squadron Ace. With his ability, while you perform an attack, you may spend one charge from an equipped torpedo upgrade. If you do, the defender rolls one fewer defense dice. This is an incredibly sneaky ability that not many people will be aware of, but what I think is really fun to do with this one is to stick ion torpedoes on there. They're cheap, so they're not going to take up a lot of your loadout, and you have them if you want to use the ion torpedoes, or if you just want to have a really devastating range 1 attack and your opponent roll one less dice in defense, then just spend a charge on it. Really good, really fun pilot, that one, and I don't think sees enough play, really. And the other notable pilot, there's only one pilot, really, and that's Fen Rao, Skull Leader. He's just incredible, he's just insane, such a dangerous ship especially when he is in the midst of a squadron. One-on-one, -on -one, he's still great, but you'll find that you can he can struggle a little bit. But while you defend or perform an attack, if the attack range is one, you may roll one additional die. So at range one, that is five red dice. If you've got Fearless loaded on there, if you've got a target lock, that is just incredible. You are going to be putting out a lot of hurt with Fen Rao. Now, as I said, 
one on one, Fenrau is handable. You can keep on top of him. But when he's with a squadron and he's nipping around and getting in your face whilst you've got to worry about other shit, he can be incredibly dangerous. Now, I love the Fang Fighter. I think it's a really cool ship. The 2.0 model with these slightly swiveling wings is really cool as well. Pros for this ship. It is dangerous. It is a knife fighter. It is fast. It's going to love getting into your opponent's face and just taking shots and it will cause a lot of damage. One obvious downside I think is the lack of shields on this. Now you can give them shield upgrade but that's not really where you're going to want to be spending your points. Four hull is great but as we know hull can be tricky because if you start getting crits through they are going straight through because you've got no shield to nullify that so you do have to be careful they are quite expensive pilots as well but all in all this ship is great really good fun to fly and your opponent is not going to enjoy themselves when this comes up on the board now another ship making that faction jump we have the btla4 y-wing we've spoken about this ship quite a bit on the rebel side and it is a fantastic platform and on the scum side it has some nasty tricks so just quickly run through those stat lines exactly the same as the rebel y-wing two attack one evade six hull two shields you get focus you get target lock you get barrel roll and you get reload now it has the same dials as the Rebel Y-Wing, so you're going to get the 1 and 2 blue straights, the blue 1 bank, you get your 4k turn in there as well, and you can do your 4 red straight manoeuvre. So exactly the same, not really much else to talk about. Now general role for this ship is Similar to the Rebels, it is going to be used more as a support platform with turrets and munitions. However, this support is going to come in slightly different packages. Now, there's two notable pilots that I think are really cool on this platform. Don't get me wrong, there are some other cool ones as well, but these are the two that we really think are great. First up, you have Drea Renthal the I-4 Pirate Lord. While a friendly non-limited ship performs an attack, if the defender is in your firing arc, the attacker may re-roll one attack die. Now, this is a really good ability, especially if you've got some big hitters flying in there. For instance, Fenral flying in, giving him an extra re-roll in there, is going to be absolutely fantastic. Now, when you're equip a dorsal turret on there that's essentially going to give you almost a 180 arc in which to do that as well so that is incredibly powerful the other pilot for those of you that have watched our flight academy will be quite familiar with we have cavill the i5 callus corsair while you perform a non-forward arc attack roll one additional attack die so you're looking at again turret attack you're essentially getting an incredibly powerful ion turret on there as well so that is four dice normally and five dice at range one giving you a four dice dorsal turret attack so cavil is incredibly good definitely worth having a look with him now, pros and cons of this ship are very similar to the Rebellion faction. So you only have one evade, so you are probably going to be taking damage quite quickly. But you are quite chunky with eight health. So that's not exactly a bad thing. Generally, points-wise, they're not a huge amount of points either. So you're going to be able to field one of these and stack them up quite highly. There's a lot of different upgrades that you can pop on these. So you'll be looking at Astromex missiles devices torpedoes turrets so these guys can really fill out those slots in your list and provide great support for the rest of your squadron now if 
any ship screams scum, it has to be the fire spray. This ship, it's it's just so well known. It it's probably the most well known ship within the scum faction, barring now the Razor Crest. It is synonymous with this faction. Everyone who sees it will just know it instantly. It is a fantastic platform and it's an absolute beast. So you get three attack forward and back. So that's a dual arc there. You get two evades, six hull, four shields. You're gonna get focus, target lock, red coordinate, and the boost action. And this is all in a medium base ship package. So that is absolutely insane. It's got a really good dial as well. It can do the one hard, which is white. It has plenty of blues to get rid of any stress it might have. It has the three talent roll and the 4K turn. All in all, this is an absolutely brilliant package. Now, you're gonna find there's a few different ways of flying this. You could have it just as a an out and out attacker, just getting right in there, causing damage, flying past your enemy and then still shooting out the back as well. You've got various title cards there that could actually improve this with the Andrasta title, the Marauder title and the Slave One title giving slightly different flavors to what your ship is going to do. Now, in regards to notable pilots, there are two pilots that I think are my favorites on this. Firstly, we got Emin Azamin, the I-4 shipping magnate. His ability, if you would drop a device at, re at speed one template you may use the three hard or three straight template instead now i absolutely love this ability because your opponent is not going to expect that at all they're going to be so used to the munitions coming out the back as a range one or possibly range two if you have got skilled bombardier but then suddenly throwing something at speed three on the hard turn speed three as well can just be absolute insanity. I think he is a fantastic pilot and he's one that I definitely add the Andrasta title to, uh, to give you that second device slot so you can just have even more fun there. And like the Fang Fighter, there's one pilot that is synonymous with this ship so you can't not talk about it, and that is Boba Fett himself. Now, he's an I-5 in the fire spray, so he's, that in itself is going to be quite a package to handle. And with him, while you defend or perform an attack, you may reroll one of your dice for each enemy ship at range zero to one. So again, Boba is another pilot that is going to enjoy getting right into your face. You can also equip Fearless onto him as well. So that is absolutely crazy, incredibly powerful. You'll probably even look to add the Slave 1 title. So while you perform a forward arc attack, if you're in the defender's rear 180, you may change one hit result to a crit result. And you add the gunner slot as well. So an incredibly powerful ability, which you can make even better with some of the titles and some of the talents on there. So a fantastic pilot. Now, it's really hard to find any negatives with this ship. It's just a crazy package, to be honest. Um, having that forward and back arc are brilliant, especially when they're both three dice that you don't get a lot of ships that have forward and back that are exactly the same so this is very powerful two evades that's not great but still fairly good when you have 10 health and some of the abilities you can get on these ships are just crazy you're not really going to struggle to get rid of stress on there you have so many different upgrades you can put on there I think probably the biggest downside with the ship is it's on a medium base and 
medium bases can just be tricky to fly. But all in all, I think the Fire Spray is an absolutely fantastic ship. It looks great and it's a handful on the board. So yeah, really hard to find anything truly negative about this. If you can think of any downsides for this ship, drop them in the comments below. We'd be interested to hear what you think, any experiences you've had in the past flying with it or against it. Now we mentioned this just a moment ago, but this is contender for the most recognizable scum ship to Star Wars and sci-fi fans. This is the ST-70 Assault Ship, better known as the Razor Crest. Anyone that's watched The Mandalorian is going to love this ship. It is a bit of a junker, but it gets the job done. Now, it's got a pretty good stat line as well. Three attack, two evades, seven hull, two shields. You get focus, evade, target lock, and red barrel roll. If you're using Q90, you do get the calculate instead. Now, you only get three ships with three pilots with this one, so not a huge selection of options, but that's not actually that bad. Now, it has a really interesting dial. So it does come with the red stop. It has a 5K turn. There is a lot of red on here, so you get the one and three harder red. You get the two talon, and the only blues it naturally has are the one through four straight. So it is going to be quite tricky to remove that stress on this ship. But that doesn't mean it's definitely not worth flying. General role for this, it's such a new ship, it's still quite hard to really gauge that. In the games that we've played against it, it's been quite good as a just out and out attacking ship, especially when you equip certain upgrades to this. For instance, we've seen it with L337, The Child, Predator, Fearless, uh, Notorious even chucked on there. So there's a lot of upgrades that are going to really help this. Again, it's still trying to find its place, so it's hard to say what its true general role is, but it's got a good attack value, so chucking it right in there isn't exactly going to hurt you. Now, notable pilots... There's only really one to talk about here, and that is Din Djarin, the Mandalorian himself. Again, like Boba Fett and Fenrau, this he's just synonymous with this ship. So his ability, while you defend or perform an attack, if you are in the forward arc a range 1 to 2 of 2 or more enemy ships, you may change one of your blank results to a focus result. That's a really good ability, especially if you do have a force user on there or the child, for instance, it gives you the ability to change that. Or even if you've got something like Fearless or Predator on there, great ability, some great upgrades that can really utilize that. Now, pros and cons of this ship, again, still quite difficult. I think the biggest downside with this ship is the waiting to red to blue maneuvers. You get a lot of red maneuvers and not many blues, so it's gonna be tough to get rid of those. You can obviously equip some crew on there that are gonna help. As we said earlier, L337 is going to be a pretty good crew to have on there. Not only will you mess up what could have been a really good attack roll for your opponent, but then you get access to those blue banks as well. Um, but in general, I think this is a really good ship. Um, a great amount of health there. Two evades is quite nice. And that three attack. And currently, at time of recording, it has a really good loadout. The Mandalorian has 20 points of loadout. Q90 has 16. So you can get quite a lot of stuff on this. And that is really going to be where these ships are going to come into their own. Moving on to the large base ships, we have the Jumpmaster 5000. This ship has gone through so many changes since it was first released back in version 1. 
at one point, if you weren't flying three of these, you weren't flying enough of them, and they were just absolutely insane. It's had probably the biggest roller coaster ride in terms of where it sits in the meta ever since that point. Right now, I think it's in a really good spot, actually. I do like the Jump Master, I think it's a cool ship. So, let's have a look at its stat line. You have a two dice turret attack. You get two evades, which for a large base ship is really nice. Uh, six hull and three shields, so not the healthiest large base ship. You get the focus to red rotate, target lock to red rotate, and the red barrel roll. What I think makes this ship the most interesting, though, is its dial. It's an asymmetric dial, which, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, I think this is the only ship that does have an asymmetric dial at this point. I can't think of anything else off the top of my head that also has one. Um, so, looking at it, you get access to the one and two hard. To the left is white, and to the right is red. You get all the bank movers, left banks are blue, right banks are white. You get the one through four straight, you get the 4k turn, and you get the left three sloop, which is red. So, yeah, a really odd dial. So, if you are flying this, make sure you know which side of the board you're on as to which side you want to turn, because otherwise you could put yourself in a tricky position there. Um, as a general role, this ship can be used in multiple ways. It can be a torpedo carrier going in for a little alpha strike. You can stick a gunner on there. You've got cannons as well, so you can do some quite big hits there. You get two cannons on most of these, in fact. So you can actually put some of the big cannons on here, which is going to be quite fun. Now, notable pilots. There are, again, two pilots I want to have a look at for this ship that I think are really interesting. Uh, first things first, we're going to look at Tel Traver in the I-4 Escape Artist. Now, if you would be destroyed, you may spend one charge. If you do, discard all of your damage cards, suffer five damage, and place yourself in reserves instead. At the start of the next planning phase, place yourself within range one of your player edge. This is just crazy. I mean, it's insane. Your ship dies and you get it back, albeit with only one health. Now, you can actually have quite a lot of fun with this if you have Quill on there. So, Quill, action, roll one attack die for each damage card you have. For each hit result, repair one face-up ship damage card. Then for each crit result, repair one face-down damage card. For each black result, remove an orange token, and then for each focus result, gain one focus token. You could, in potential, re-heal Teltraver most of the way up. And we've seen it happen. So there's some cool combinations you can do with there, and it's a really fun ship. The other one we want to have a look at is actually your I-1 Nomlum. After you become the defender, if the attacker is not in your turret, you must rotate your turret indicator to a standard arc the attacker is in. Now this can go one of two ways. It can either work for you really well, or it can go quite badly if you're trying to line up a specific shot. But it does mean that you're essentially getting a free rotate action, albeit you can't control where it's going to go, but this can be just hilarious. Your opponent thinks that they've outflanked Nom Lum and they take a shot, then suddenly they're going to get shot back. Yes, this is I-1, so if another ship from a different arc shoots it, it moves the arc again, but Nom Lum is generally going to be guaranteed a shot which is really good because sometimes you've moved your arc and suddenly it's not in the right place and that's very frustrating but not so with Nom Lum if he's being shot at. Now pros and cons of this ship I think 
one of the big pros is it's actually a really fun ship to fly and there's just so many crazy things you can do with it. It can be used as a support ship just to pump out some damage, stick Notorious on there to cause strains on your opponent. Um, so you can have good fun with that. Biggest negative for this is that asymmetric dial. Although that can come in really handy, it's also something you have to remember and it can be really tricky to take that into account so just be aware of that asymmetric dial on there but in general the jump master is currently in a nice spot on that roller coaster of meta viability now again we have another iconic ship this one crossing the faction border we have the customized yt 1300 light freighter otherwise known as the millennium falcon and in this case, we have Lando's Millennium Falcon. Now, again, this is a very iconic ship with just a slightly different look to it. And it does have a slightly different stat line to the Rebel variant that we spoke about in a previous video. So this one has a two red dice bow tie attack, as opposed to the three you get with the Rebel variant. It has one evade eight hull and only three shields compared to the five shields of the rebel variant you still get the same action bar so that's focus target lock red boost and the rotate if you're running l337 you get the calculate instead of a focus now you have all of the same moves on the dial that you get with the Rebel version, except this time, instead of having the two banks being blue, they are white, and you actually get the blue one banks. So this ship is gonna do quite well in those slower speeds. Now, this does mean that in comparison to the Rebel Falcon, this is slightly cheaper. Uh, so you scum players actually do get a bit of an advantage. You can run more of these. And they are, I actually think, a little bit more common to see on the board than the Rebel Falcon. Now, this does have the option of having the escape craft dock to it. We'll come on to the escape craft shortly. So general role for this is, again, another straight up attacker this one does really well with the options that you can to upgrade it with its crew slots talents etc and generally likes to get in there and just cause quite a lot of pain having that blue one bank is actually really handy for the ship to alleviate stress now looking at notable pilots on here Again, I think there's two we're going to have to have a look at. Firstly, Han Solo, once again, another I-6 variant. His ability, while you defend or perform a primary attack, if the attack is obstructed by an obstacle, you may roll one additional die. Now, this is actually brilliant for Han, um, especially with some of the upgrades you can equip him with. If you've got the trick shot talent on there, this is going to make him very powerful. He's going to love skirting around those obstacles and just causing an absolute ton of pain to you. We've had a lot of fun um, flying against this actually and watching this in practice. It is a really good option. Now, the other pilot that's really good to have a look at as well is Lando Calrissian is the i4 after you roll dice if you are not stressed you may gain one stress token to reroll all of your blank results so the attack efficiency of this ship is incredible being able to roll all reroll all your blanks you can't be overstated how good that actually is now we mentioned it a moment ago but you do get the title lander's millennium falcon uh, so one escape craft may dock with you. While you have an escape craft docked, you may treat its shields as if they were your on your ship card. While you perform a primary attack against a stress ship, roll one addi additional attack die. So coupling that with Han and Lando is going to be just incredible. I mean, 
harm could potentially be getting uh, five, six dice there if you have an obstructed range one shot with the escape craft and trick shot. Um, Lando, with the reroll of the blanks, it's just incredible. Now, positives and negatives of this ship, I think one of the big positives is actually how cheap this ship actually is. Uh, Han Solo, at the time of recording, is only six points. So that just goes to show that you can fit multiple Millennium Falcons, if you have them, onto the table. And again, having an 11 health ship before any upgrades or the escape craft being added on to there with that much potential damage output is going to be insane. So if you do have more than one, this is going to be really interesting to have on the board. Uh, downsides again large base ships um, they do sometimes struggle with only having one evade dice so focus fire is going to drop them down quite quickly but again there's enough upgrades that you can actually add on to this ship to counteract any of those so a really good fun variant of the falcon and probably one of the more common versions you're going to see on the board Now the final ship that we're going to talk about in this part one of the Scum Faction Breakdown is of course the Escape Craft. It would be silly not to talk about it after just talking about the Falcon. This is a really interesting ship actually, um, a great model especially the way it actually attaches to the Falcon and di disengages from it, I think it looks really cool. Um, a surprisingly good package as well with a stat line of two attack two evade two hull and two shields now you do get a really cool inbuilt ability with this called co-pilot while you are docked your carrier ship has your pilot's ability in addition to its own so for those named pilots on there that is going to be really good Again, coupled up with the Landers Millennium Falcon title where you can use the Escape Craft Shields as your own is going to be super handy. On the dial, quite a nice one actually, you get the red stop, you get the one through three straight and banks with the ones being blue and the two straight being blue. You get two hard and you get the three K turn. Now, action bar, you get focus or calculate, white barrel roll, and the red coordinate. So, general roll for this, most likely, if you're running the normal named pilots, you'd be looking to include this for the actual ability that the escape craft provides you and those extra shields on there as well. Now, one of the other pilots that you can get will be providing a very different dynamic, and we'll come on to that in a moment when we talk about some of these notable pilots. But generally, you'll be using this to boost your Falcon even further. Now, looking at those notable pilots, there's two for me which stand out here, and I think they are going to be great options to include on there. First things first, we have Lando Calrissian again. Uh, his I-4 and his ability after you roll dice, if you are not stressed, you make a one stress stroke to re-roll all of your blank results. Now, the exact same ability that he gets in the Falcon as well. However, if you have this on Han Solo, not only are you giving yourself extra health for the Falcon, the ability that Lando has it's just crazy. You're really making Han Solo incredibly efficient. And Lando only being three points, yes, you're essentially making this a nine point ship for Han Solo. But again, as we said, with Trickshot, Lando's Millennium Falcon ability, Han's ability, you could be pulling off a six dice shot. So it is fantastic. The other one that we really like is the autopilot drone, and this is the one that differs from the other three pilots. So the autopilot drone, 
has the ability Rigged Energy Cells. During the system phase, if you are not docked, lose one charge. At the end of the activation phase, if you have zero charges, you are destroyed. Before you are removed, each ship arranged zero to one suffers one critical damage. This is hilarious. It's just so funny. You're essentially sending, you've got a mobile bomb there. And in early 2.0, you'd see a lot of people spend two turns with this undocked to drop those charges, then redock it with the Falcon, get a bit closer, and then undock it, launch it into the middle of your opponents, and suddenly you've just got an unexpected mine there. It's fantastic. It's it's so versatile because you can put that almost anywhere. So you don't get any other abilities like you would with Lando or L337, but you have a ready-made mine to shoot out at any point. It's just fantastic. Now, pros and cons for this ship. Pro, the abilities that they offer you on the Falcon are fantastic across the board for all of them. The fact that you can use its shields whilst it's docked is again another bonus, just making your Falcon a bit healthier and just really adding to the value that you're going to get out of the Millennium Falcon and the escape craft. One of the negatives, you're not really going to use this without the Falcon. So although it's quite a cheap ship, unless it's with the Falcon, it's not really something you're just going to have in there. So it's not so, you're not going to really see this without the Falcon or just have it fly with other ships. It's not really that kind of ship there. But all in all, it is a really cool ship, especially when you do have it with the Falcon. The way it, the model actually docks together is just brilliant. But guys, that's going to round out this video. So we do still have more ships for Scum in the standard variant to go through and we will go over those in part two so keep an eye out for that very soon as always if you have enjoyed the video please like the video subscribe to the channel if you think we've missed anything or you want us to discuss any particular ship that hasn't been discussed in a future video drop a comment down below we can definitely look into that we'd love to hear what your thoughts are there but in the meantime, guys, we will see you next time.